Okay, I'll uh, hopefully do another cleanup video, but this is the first, uh, what do you want, sneak peek of the bee barn. So we just have an insulated two by four door, basically uh, styrofoam in between, wide enough to get hives, insulated the floor, uh, put styrofoam in between the studs so it's all insulated and then spray foam the wall. I did a prior YouTube video on that. Don't think I'd really redo that again, but and then run out of spray foam. Should have just done it all with this vapor barrier. Um, I'll go and turn the light on and then I'll explain. So um, I just run a uh, light switch and then I've got two red lights there. Um, so that's normal operation. I was gonna run a ceiling fan, it's 130 bucks. And then with the mounting to get it down low enough, I'd run some studs. And then I found this at Home Depot for 30 bucks. I of course have it blowing up. So then that way it's sucking air up and blowing it. And then it's forced to come down the outsides is what I'm hoping for. Really happy with that so far. Um, and then this is what my kind of, so air conditioner, I'm gonna run a cool bot. I don't have it. I'm really kind of in love with these ink birds. And this is a bathroom exhaust fan. It's run to uh, ink bird humidity. Right now I have the humidity set at 54. So if it rises above that, it would kick the exhaust fan on. And then I run a dryer duct in reverse so that when that turns on, it'll suck air and it's forced to suck it through here and then up there. So the higher humidity at the ceiling leaves first, draws in hopefully drier air on the floor. That's where my beehives are all gonna be is on the floor. So then I'm gonna have my now temperature set point is set for four degrees. It's currently 17 in here. Um, and then I did run two 220. So this one's a direct 220 plug-in uh, to its own breaker. But then this 220 is run um, with a, oh, why is the name slipping me? And it's not a relay, contactor, a contactor. And then my ink bird is running. So when it calls for heat, it comes down here, sends the signal to the back of the contactor. Chunk, contactor opens, lets the 220 power, right? So then I'm running 110 to the back of the contactor and then 220 through the contactor to my 220 heater. And I really wanted to run a 220 heater instead of a 110 heater. I mean, you could run a 110 heater directly off the ink bird. It'd be a lot simpler, a lot cheaper. I didn't want to do that because I thought I was actually going to be running heaters in here. But now, I mean, it is warm outside, but if I load this building full of bees, I don't think heat is going to be the issue. I think the humidity is going to be the issue and keeping it cool enough. So the only thing I might do now is I might run a second one of them exhaust fans and I might just run it straight off a mechanical timer. So once a day, it'll turn on and it'll force the recycle of air in this building is what I'm thinking. And then, yeah, still have to work on the, the air conditioner. Um, that's what the cool bot's for. Really coming together, got a mess to clean up. Um, but yeah, had a great electrician that helped me get started. And then I've been just learning a lot. And uh, I think this is gonna be a great little bee barn to start with and work out all the kinks. Anyhow, take care. Hope this helps somebody. Okay, we just brought the bee trailer in. I think it's like zero degrees Celsius out now. Got the boys out here helping me. Took all the hives off the trailer. Definitely because this is a prototype, we would want some sort of ramp design and then just a dolly and then we could just dolly them right into the shed. So, come on, Duke. Shut the door. So I gotta kill that light there somehow. And then I did tape the, so I'll turn on the red lights. And then I got this fan going and then with all the snow and stuff melting, the humidity jumped up. So that fan is running. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. It's 60% right now. I have it set to 52. Four degrees, it's four and a half in here. 
Um, and then that's the one that I said, I think, I, I'm not sure if I videoed that one actually. I run that one down and it's just on a straight mechanical timer and it's set to run 15 minutes twice a day just to cycle the air in here. And then of course, I think I showed that on the last video, my 220 heater. It's run off of a 110 Inkbird, but then the Inkbird runs the contactor and the contactor lets the 220 power through to the plug-in, uh, which works really good. So yeah, super stoked. We got nine hives on this one. This one that I dropped down to a single was a failing hive all year. It struggled, did me no good. Uh, we're gonna see if it makes it through the winter. And then I guess I still haven't decided whether I'm gonna go down to singles or keep doubles in the future. Uh, that's my son's hive on that side. We're just keeping it separate. I got the other son is to bring in his hive. We'll put it on that side too, just in case we have winter kill. And then that's kind of up to them to manage that coming into next year. And then because this is all just a prototype, um, we're basically looking for anything that we can improve and the size of the shed could we run double decker could we run triple high what do we all need to do for that so yeah definitely need to kill that light um so yeah hopefully again this helps somebody gives somebody some ideas um to try and like i said i wouldn't spend the money on the foam i would just do the insulate vapor barrier and the ply board the floor was a win uh with the insulation so yeah, you will spend a little bit of money, but if you at least start collecting some of your resources now, um, just buying bees every year is not cheap either. So, and then down the road, hopefully I could use this in the fall to this building for a meat hanger maybe. Um, there is lots of possibilities for a shed like this. So I don't feel like I'm wasting my money. Okay, take care.